Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. Here, by a viewer's request, to comment on how to effectively witness and evangelize. Well, <clears throat> I'm going to share some don'ts. We'll start with some don'ts and then we'll go into some do's. I'm going to share a story with you. You know I do stories. That's how I, I get my point across. One time I was sitting at a restaurant. Daytime, bright sunlight, beautiful day. And yours truly was as unsaved as the worst sinner down the street. I was not a saved. Wasn't sanctified. Wasn't thinking about nobody's Jesus. Or salvation for that matter. I thought church was a joke because of the lives I had seen living out of fork and tongue, you know, living out of both sides of their mouth. One minute they're hallelujah, and the next minute they were UMF, blah, 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 blah. So I was like, whatever. Well, one day I was at a restaurant, and these two people were sitting at a table about three tables from me, and they just seemed to be so taken by me. And I couldn't figure out what their trip was, but I was getting a little annoyed, to be honest with you. Well, next thing you know, they both jump up. I mean, totally in sync with each other. They stand up and they make a beeline to my table. And I'm looking at them like, what the heck are y'all doing? I didn't invite you here. I'm having a nice moment of solitude. Me and my meal. What are you doing here? I didn't invite you. Well, they plop down. They don't say, do you mind if we join you just for a moment? We won't take much. No, they plop down. They just come uninvited and plant their little hineys on the chairs around my table. And commence with this. Do you know Jesus? Do you know Jesus loves you? And so do we. And I'm saying, oh, no, not, not one of them. <laughs> I don't want to hear that. I don't want to be bothered. I was turned off before they could turn me on. There are times when Christians get so zealous. It's like force feeding a patient that doesn't want to eat. And what do they end up doing? They either gag or what they shove down comes right back up. It's like not only did they not want it, their body didn't want it. But here you go, good Samaritan, you're going to shove it down their throat if it kills them. Well, sometimes it kills people's faith. Moving right along. Another thing that's not too uh, comfortable. Do you know you're going to hell? If you don't give your heart to Jesus, you need Jesus. Yeah. See, I don't know if you asked the right person. Because I'm very unconventional and I'm totally not religious. I am very much into God, very much filled and in love with Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, all of that. I live a holy life. I follow the Bible. I love the communing with the saints at church. I love the fellowshipping and the breaking of bread. You can look at me and tell I like breaking bread. But listen, you have to think of evangelizing. Here's the do side. You have to think of evangelism as fishing. Why do you think Jesus said from now on, I will make you fishers of men? When you fish... Now, I don't fish. My father did, and so did my husband. And I found out after being with my husband going fishing that there were certain types of bait that worked better for some fish than others. So you can't just use the same bait across the board and have the same results with every type of species. I call it the hook. You got to get the hook in their mouth. Come up with a hook. Sometimes for me, for example, I shoot pool. So if I want to evangelize at a pool hall, 
I'm not talking about a bar, even though that's a good place to evangelize, if you know how to do it. If I want to shoot pool, I could wrap that conversation around that pool table and wrap the conversation about that pool table and the pool game around the game of life being controlled by God. And I could draw this picture of God being the cue, the cue ball, and the Holy Spirit, or God being the, the stick and the, or the person standing behind the stick and Jesus is the cue ball, is the, uh, <clears throat> anyway, I could paint a picture, okay? I could always do analogies, thank God. And the person would get it in a way that doesn't sound like I'm coming at them. Because what I'm going to talk about is what happened to me. I'm not going to talk about them. I don't know them. Now, unless the Holy Spirit drops a nugget in my heart and says, talk about parenthood, talk about relationships, talk about pain, talk about your pain and what I did for you, or talk about an accident you had and how I brought you out unscathed, how I warned you about the dog. Talk about how I protect you. I mean, when you have God in your life, you realize that you can't just come up with a, a, a pat formula. Uh, we do the A, then we do the B, you know, like they have in church. First, we're going to have the reading of, of the program. Then we're going to have an A and B selection by the choir. Then we're going to have brother so-and-so come up and pray a prayer over the word of God. Then we're going to have pastor or sister so-and-so come up and bring the word of God. Then we're going to it's like, oh, come on. Instead of telling us what you're going to do, why don't you just do it? So sometimes when you are trying to witness, you can't just come up with the A and B selection and think that suffices. No. What you have to do is say, this is what happened to me. Let me tell you a story about what happened to me. And then you could talk about Jesus like he's some, 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 you know, John Doe somewhere that just came to your rescue. And when they say, how could a human be? Oh, I wasn't talking about a human being. I was talking about Jesus Christ. Can you imagine that he would actually do that? I never thought that. I mean, there are ways you can slide him in to home base. Whew. Deal done. And another thing, don't try to close the deal. The word says, some plant, others water. But it is God that gets the increase. Don't try to convince somebody how badly they need Jesus. The first thing you need to be is a living example. If they don't see love in you, if they don't see patience, acceptance, kindness, genuineness, holiness, <laughs> you've already lost the, you've lost the war before you even fought that battle. So, to thine own self be true. Let God be true and every man a liar. But you don't want to walk around and people looking at you like you're the liar. You want to walk around letting people say, I don't know what that is that person has. There's a peace about them. There's a love. There's something about them. I want that. I don't know what it is, but I want it. Now you got your hook in their mouths. And you can invite them to dinner. All kind of ways. Anyway, I'm done. But don't look at a particular formula. Ask God to lead you, each individual, with each individual. Because each individual needs a different approach. Each individual needs a different bait and hook. You hear me? All right. God bless you. Do what Jesus did. He met us at our need. Amen? Amen.